Hi, it's Neil Sean here on Your Entertainment News. I'm joined by one of my favourite girls in history, the lovely Miss Susanna Lipscomb, who tells us all about her brand new book, The King is Dead, a well-worthy read. Remember though, Susanna? If you miss it, you miss out. So don't miss Susanna today on Your Entertainment News. So it's about Henry VIII's last will and testament. So a month before Henry died, uh, when he was 55 years old, um, he drew up a new, or had a new will and testament drawn up for him. And uh, this has been quite controversial over the centuries because in it he dictated who should succeed him. Um, unlike previous wills, uh, Henry VIII's will had real constitutional clout, and so he spends, it's, it's, it's astonishingly hubristic, as you can imagine, from Henry VIII, and so he decides that he has the right to determine his successor. So he sets out who should succeed him. But also he says that if he dies um, when, uh, and the, his son, his successor, is a minor, he sets up a regency council to govern in its place. And the, the will establishes who that regency council will be, and the great historical orthodoxy has been that the will was a product of a conspiracy to determine who should be on that council. And so what I was doing in this book is I'm looking at the will and looking at the process of making it and the last year of his life and I don't think it is a conspiracy. I think that Henry VIII's will is literally that, his own volition. But I felt when I was looking at the evidence that it seemed to me that quite a few key pieces of evidence that had been used to establish a conspiracy had been misread um, and that actually meant something else and misused and, and some of them were just plain wrong. And so that's what I've suggested here. So I, 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 hope, I hope that people find it persuasive, we'll see. It was interesting to think about the last year because actually in practice there have been some academic journal articles on this but there hasn't been that much written about it that's in the, uh, the public domain I suppose. And I thought that it would be an interesting opportunity to look at whether my understanding of Henry VIII's character remains true to the end of his life because earlier in his reign it seemed to me that he wasn't manipulated by factions and he was his own man but I thought well for the last year of his life you know he's he's disabled he's got this running sore he's in constant pain he's in the sort of Tudor equivalent of a, a wheelchair and a stand of stair lift and maybe actually maybe he is being pushed around by others and so it was trying to answer that question really that made me think oh yeah this would be really worth looking at. The book is longer than it was supposed to be. It's supposed to be a really little book and um, <laughs> and then I just kept finding things and adding words and um, you know so it, but it, it, with research you always want to keep on going um, but it was really fun with this because Henry VIII's will survives it's in the National Archives you can go and anyone can go and look at it the amazing thing about the National Archives anyone can go and look at it and they have a digital copy as well if you just want to do it from the comfort of your own bed and um, and it's gorgeous and um, it's so exciting you know because it has it's imprinted well it's imprinted with his signature one of the points of controversy is that Henry didn't sign his own will because for the last two years of his life he was having um, signatures done by dry stamps so someone would impress his signature and a clerk would ink it in um, and this was done for all state documents so, so something like 1500 documents were produced like this because Henry you know, didn't want to go to the trouble of actually writing himself and um, <laughs> no no I mean, it, it makes me wonder if there were things like you know Parkinson's or whether there was a you know he, he couldn't but so they had to be regularly uh, pardoned for counterfeiting the king's signature but his will didn't had this stamp. So one of the controversies has been whether it was therefore legitimate, etc. You know. So, it, um, but you can go and see this very thing, and that's so exciting. The career decision was really late. I, 
I just had great history teachers at school. I remember a Mrs. Marcus, if she's out there, um, who taught me when I was 11 or 12 that really sort of got me into history. And then, you know, great history teachers through secondary school, particularly um, when I was doing my A-levels at Epsom, I had um, people who were interested in me in the, you know, the Russian Revolution and all sorts of things. So I ended up deciding to do history at university. And it was only after that, it was in, actually it was in my last year at university, I had a one-to-one -one tutorial with a man called Robin Briggs, who's this incredible historian who works on uh, witchcraft and things like this. And I came away from that, we've been talking about religious violence in the 16th century. And I came away from that meeting thinking, well, if I could do a doctorate with him, maybe I'd do. I never had any ideas of doing graduate study before, but I had this amazing meeting with him. And so thought I would do it. And then about a year later, I signed up and went ahead and did more degrees. When I was at Hampton Court, I used to work at Hampton Court as a research curator. And we were working on the 500th anniversary of Henry VIII's succession back in 2009. Um, so I know Lucy Worsley, for example, very well. We were working together. And she, she is. And we were, um, so we were doing this new exhibition and new Vista experience to mark this important year. And we ended up doing, covering it on the news and Time Team did a special episode and things like that. And as a result of that, people came along and said, oh, could you do the expert contributor thing where you, you know, talk, talking heads? And, and then someone came along and asked me to present. And so, it, again, it was unforeseen, and, but, but really good fun. So. Documentary filming is, um, is not the glamorous end of the spectrum. When we were filming the Witch Hunt uh, series that's just gone out on Channel 5, we were filming that in February. We started on the, the Scottish coast and, it, you know, it's absolutely bitter. And it's not like they send a makeup team with you or anything like this, you know. And I, my all-male crew would, would fail to tell me when I just, I'd, you know, my eyes had been weeping so much from the cold that I, anyway, they just never say. Um, so, yeah, it's not, it's not glamorous at all, but it's, um, but it's really great to go to these places and it's really wonderful to have an opportunity to have access or to handle documents or, or objects that, you, you know, generally speaking, if you don't have a film crew with you, they don't let you, they, that you do. So that's wonderful. Well, we've just finished filming um, for BBC4 a, a new Hidden Killers, which is of the post-war home. So it's all very close to home. So we've done the Victorians and the Edwardians and the Tudor, but now it's bang up to date. And of course, the, the 1950s home is something, you know, we're, we're all familiar with it. You know, parents and grandparents had, you know, houses it's like this. Some of us still have. Yeah, I mean, so much of it is, you know, exactly. You, you know, all the things are so familiar. And, um, and yet, of course, it's an age which has its own dangers. I'm working on a book, uh, just a, another little book, she says, hopefully, uh, on Henry VIII's wives because the six queens. Um, Dan Jones and I have made a series on uh, Henry VIII's wives for Channel 5, which will be coming out next year. So I'm writing the book of the series. And then after that, I'm doing um, an academic book which is on uh, the lives of women in 16th century France. And so I did, I've done all the sorts of research in the um, French archives in the south of France, were obviously a terrible hardship. And, um, and so that hopefully will be coming out in the next year or two as well.